In this video, we're going to look at this three-dimensional prism. And this is my sketch, and we know that this red length right here is 2.5. This green length is 6. The question is, what is the length of this side right here? We'll call it A. And we should know, of course, that this is a right angle right here. That's what we need to know. And even though this is a three-dimensional shape, if you think about just the just the end, if I was to slice this off right here, the shape on the end right here would be a right triangle. And in fact, you can think of this as one of the legs. Let's call it A. This six right here is a leg. Let's call it B. And this long side right here, A, as the hypotenuse. I was going to call it C, as we typically do, but that's going to be confusing since the variable is A. So first of all, we should know that this is the hypotenuse because it's across from the right angle, and it's the longest side, and that's always going to be the case. And once we know that, we can set up the Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, to find this long side. Now to clear things up, I'm going to go back. And instead of saying a squared and b squared and c squared, which is what we typically say, I'm going to say, take one leg of the triangle, let's call it leg 1, and square it. And then add that to the second leg of the triangle and square that. And then that'll equal the hypotenuse squared. I'm doing that because I noticed, first of all, my b looks like a 6. Secondly, A is being labeled as the missing hypotenuse. So I don't want to call that A and call this A. It's just a bad move. So sorry about that. Let me fix this, clear this, and clear that. So I'm going to call this leg, leg 1 over here. And there's no, this, this could have been leg 1, it doesn't really matter. And this is going to be leg 2. Okay, now this will be easier to solve. So leg 1 squared is going to be equal to 2.5 squared. And what's that? Well, think of 25 times 25, which is 625. And remember that we're squaring 2.5, so we're multiplying this number, which is 10 times smaller than 25, twice. So our overall answer will be not just 10 times smaller, but 10 times smaller and 10 times smaller than this product. In other words, 10 and 10 times smaller is 100 times smaller. So this won't give us 625. It'll give us 6.25. That's 100 times smaller than this number right here. OK, next, we want to add leg 2 squared. That's a little bit easier, right? 6 squared is just 6 times 6, or 36. And this is going to equal our hypotenuse squared. So we add 36 and 6.25 to get 42.25. And that equals our hypotenuse squared. So what's the hypotenuse? Well, it's going to be the square root of 42.25. Now, even before we try and evaluate if this is rational, let's establish what that means. That means that this, this hypotenuse is, well, it's bigger than 6, let's say, inches or whatever, because 6 squared equals 36, and we're going to try to get 42. But it's less than 7 inches because 7 squared is 49, and that's bigger than 42. So this square root is between 6 and 7, right? So with the Google Calculator, we can just type in square root of a number and test to see if it actually has a nice rational root. Let's see what happens with this. And it does. 6.5. Now, um, that's interesting because sometimes it's really hard to find a square root. In this case, I guess if we had just tried 6.5 between 6 and 7, we would have realized right away that that works. So I guess, you know, on a test or something, if you're given a decimal square root like this and you don't have a handy algorithm on you, and you know it's between two decimals, try the halfway point and see what happens. Um, let's see, is 36, 36 plus 6.25 um, gives you 42.25. And 49 minus 6 point, 
seven five gives you forty two point two five. So it's about halfway between these two numbers. So it doesn't make sense that a halfway decimal would actually work. So in this case, this this length of this hypotenuse right here is six point five. All right. Hope that.